Hello, BookTube, and today's essay is going to be from Arno Bennett as well. I will finish the week with him, so I'll do two more for Thursday and Friday, and then we'll give Arnold a bit of a break. Uh, this is coming again from Books and Persons, and the articles were originally written in the New Age between 1908 and 1911 under the pseudonym of Jacob Tonson, and this was published by Chad Owen Windus, in 1917, mine is the second printing. Today's article uh, was from the 10th of March, 1910, and it's entitled Publishers and Authors. Authentic documents are always precious to the student, and here is one which strikes me as precious beyond the ordinary. It is a letter received from a well-known publisher by a correspondent of mine who was a journalist. Quote, I am awfully sorry that we cannot take your novel, which is immensely clever and which in interested my partner more than anything he has read in a good well. He agrees with me, however, that it has not got the qualities that make of a sale, and you know that it is the great dissenterum with the publisher. Now, don't get peevish and send us nothing else. I know you have a lot of talent, and your difficulty is in applying this talent to really practical problems rather than to get uh, to the more attractive products of the imagination. Get down to facts, my son, and study your market. Find out what the people like to read and then write a story along those lines. This will bring you success, for you have a talent for success. Above all things, don't follow the lead of our headstrong friend who insists upon doing exactly what you have done in this novel namely neglecting the practical market and working out the fanciful dictates of imagination. Remember that novel writing is as much of a business as making calico. If you write the novels <coughs> excuse me. If you write the novels that people want, you are going to sell them in bales. When you have made your name uh, and your market, then you can afford to let your imagination run riot. And then people will look at you admiringly and say, I don't understand this genius at all, but isn't he great? Do you see the point? You must do this after you have won your market, not before. And you can only win your market in the first place by writing what folks want to buy. Sincerely, yours. End quote. The, writing, the writer is American. But the attitude of the average pushing English publisher could not have been more accurately expressed than in the letter sent by one New Yorker to another. The only thing that puzzles me is why the man originally chose books instead of calico. He would have sold more bales and made more money in calico. He would have understood calico better. In my opinion, many publishers would have understood calico better than books. There are two things which a publisher ought to know about novel producers. Things which do not, curiously enough, apply to calico producers, and which few publishers have ever grasped. I have known publishers go into the bankruptcy court and come out again safely and yet never grasp the significance of these two things. The first is that it is intensely stupid to ask the novelist to study the market with a view to obtaining large circulations. If he does not write to please himself, if his own taste does not naturally coincide with the taste of the million, he will never reach the million by taking thought. The Hall Cranes, the Miss Corellis, and Miss Humphrey Wards were born, not made. It may seem odd even to a publisher that they write as they do write by sheer glad instinct. Instinct. But it is so. The second thing is that when a novelist has made his name and the market and his market by doing one kind of thing, he cannot successfully go off on a tangent and do another kind of thing to make the largest possible amount of money out of an artist. The only way is to leave him alone. When, uh, when will publishers grasp this? To make the largest possible amount of money out of an imitative hack, the only way is to leave him alone. When will publishers grasp that an imitative hack knows by the grace of God 40 times more about the public taste than a publisher knows? 
So there we go. Uh, there's another one. And again, it sort of can fit today. Um, this is over 100 years ago. Uh, well, 110 to, to be more precise, just over 110 years ago when he wrote this. And uh, it could be applied today uh, with writers and publishers. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoy it. And as I say, I will continue with two more of Arnold Bennett and then we'll move on. We'll give him a little break before we come back to him because we will be coming back to him for sure at some point. Anyway, take care of Booktube.